Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. It is my privilege to be joined by an old friend of Forbidden Planet, Garth Dennis. How are you doing, mate? All right, pretty good, Andrew. What about you? Yeah, I'm also pretty good. I'm also pretty good. And we'll be better in a second once we've talked about your new book, Out from AWA, Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. Now, issue two of this book is out right now. Right. And uh, issue three is available for pre-order from the links attached to this video, as is issue two and issue one. On uh, Issue three is out on July 21st, 2021. What can you tell me about this book, mate, which I'm sure to many people feels like you accessing the yourself of, you know, the boys and whatnot and whatnot, you know, in terms of its humour and its take on things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Marjorie began... Um, I think the moment when a time travel story or the notion of doing one coalesced for me was um, when I was watching that show Vikings um, and I saw the long ship, you know, coming up the fjord, approaching the shore and the villagers running in terror the way they're supposed to do. And I had this thought, and I often have this thought when I'm watching historical drama, I thought one shot, from a decent artillery piece would blow that thing out of the water and solve all those people's problems. Often find that when I'm watching historical dramas or, or um, especially ones involving conflict, I'm thinking, oh, invent the aeroplane, invent the tank, that'll speed things up. Of course, it'll actually make things a hundred times worse, but you, you see what I'm driving at. Absolutely. Um, and these are just, this, this is just one of the many idle thoughts I have what I'm watching this kind of thing. And I think that's when I thought it's time to do a time travel book and it's time to bring all my time travel ideas, which I've been noting down over, over the past while together, uh, which is often the way a story works out for me. There'll be that one moment where I decide to pull the trigger on it. And then all the ideas I've noted down suddenly find a home. Um, and that's what happened with this. And after that, I think the title came first, the idea of Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. That's what came to mind. And I think because of the way it's scanned, there's a certain rhythm to it. And I found myself kind of humming that. It's, um, if you've seen The Usual Suspects, it's the, it's the theme they play when they're about to do the crime. It always starts <laughs> yeah. up just before they, they, they hit the cop car in New York and then the jewel uh, or the diamond merchant in, in LA. You hear this this theme start up and it has this rhythm to it and it put me in mind of somebody running somebody running fast and not stopping and they're being them kind of carrying their own momentum with them this unstoppable quality that they have and they they can't stop marjorie can't stop because she's having too good a time she's laughing at everything she does and that's what marjorie is all about she just runs through history she runs up and down the time lanes laughing her ass off, grabbing things she shouldn't and having fun. And that essentially was the genesis of the, uh, of the character via the idea of doing a time travel story. Yeah. Okay, mate. And um, it's uh, it, your first arc on the book. What, what can you tell me about how, how, what happens with the story, how you get into the story of Marjorie? Um, well, we meet Marjorie in the first issue and she's, as I say, she's pretty simple. She's, uh, she's a temporal criminal uh, and she likes, she likes to steal what she calls the pretty shiny gleamies, which is just anything she likes the look of throughout history. And while, uh, while she's stealing things, she's having as much fun as she can, really. Um, she's, she's taking what she wants meeting people she's always wanted to meet, um, finding out the answers to those great historical questions, but that's just a joke to her, really. She's not on a quest for knowledge, um, shagging around quite a bit, she likes that. She really just goes where she wants and does what she likes, which I think is the essence of a time travel story because I think because when, when you're the writer of one, you can go where you want and do where you want. You can have any, any backdrop, any character, any special effect you want. So I think I embrace that and so does Marge. But of course, you can't do that forever. And pretty soon the temporal police are on her tail. Now, uh, you said the second issue's out. So I think- Yeah, uh, that's right. right. 
I think people know very well that uh, the temporal police have shown up in the, um, the shape of uh, Harriet Finnegan, temporal cop, Marjorie Stitzer <laughs> and long-standing nemesis. Um, of course, there's, there's stuff in their own past that's uh, left Harry with a good deal of ire to work out. Um, so this looks as if it's going to be something of a romp with one pursuing the other. But pretty soon, and uh, I'm heading into issue three onwards here, pretty soon Marge accidentally blunders into uh, an evil plan uh, that will uh, use temporal technology to essentially put one very evil guy, the Lord of Evil. Um, the clues really, in the name, right? There, that's it, just like with Marge. Yeah, <laughs> Marjorie Finnegan Temple. We'll put the Lord of Evil pretty much at the top of the heap, um, and that's going to have pretty catastrophic results for all concerned. So Marge finds herself for once actually having to do something altruistic and try and foil this evil plan. Uh, of course, with Harry on her tail in not the best of moods to stop and talk, um, that's going to be more difficult than it might be. So we've got a bit of a romp, really, with um, essentially all of reality at stake, uh, helping Marge as well. We've got her long-suffering sidekick, Tim, who's basically a severed head she wears on her belt. He's her sort of time technician that allows <laughs> her to pop through time. Um, helping the Lord of Evil is Marjorie's ex-husband, Stan Zanzibar, who's he's not a complete bastard like... The Lord of Evil. He's just he's just a nasty little shit with an axe to grind. You'll find out why. Um, that's one of these things actually where I enjoyed writing the origin stories of all the characters. Everyone has a good reason to be the way they are. Um, although Marjorie's perhaps never found a good reason not to be the way she is. Is sums up her sense of responsibility. Um, so it's a, it's kind of a romp where the stakes get higher and higher as we go, and there's as much dirty fun as I can cram in, really, as much as, much as Marge can cram in. That, that's brilliant, mate. And I think, it, you know, uh, it's that that's some of the, the signature moves of some of your most successful work. You know, The Boys is a great example, I think, has, it ticks some of those boxes as well. You know, the, 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 the entertaining origin. The, the, I, one of the things I think you've always done really well, I, I remember talking to Mark Miller relatively recently, and he was saying that, um, uh, he, so just to pass on a, a like a compliment, which you've no doubt heard him say before, he was saying that he thinks in terms of comic book narrative, the person who's out there way out in front in terms of a like narrative of a, of a comic book story is yourself. You know, no. he just loves reading your stories because of like where they go and those sharp right turns you're you're adept at is kind of what what makes the book really jump and he was he was really raving about it mate you know what i mean oh, uh, and uh awfully nice of him to say i mean i've always thought that uh mark's stuff has a certain momentum of its own you know it it, it has a certain um unstoppable quality too yeah uh so that but that's awfully nice of him to say yeah, and you know, quite completely justified as well. And I think, in terms of presumably, Marjorie's set up to be a long-term book for you rather than just a short-term project. Um, could be. Uh, I yeah. mean, it's eight issues, but yeah. I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone if I say, given the tone of the book, that there will be enough survivors around to do more uh, if the spirit moves me. You know, um, I should also say that. Um, with Goran Suzuka aboard. Actually, art. great artist, mate. Such a great just, He really is fantastic. He's he's very understated, but that's a quality I really appreciate because sometimes when you feed an artist some quite out there, larger than life concepts, um, they won't understand that they're best they're best played as coolly as possible and. I can't think of a better example than here's that name again, Steve Dillon. When I think of the way he dealt with um, a lot of the scenes and concepts in Preacher that many other artists would have gone completely over the top with, but Steve simplified as far as he possibly could, I think he made those concepts 10 times stronger uh, than he would have done 
uh, had he gone in the other direction. And Goran's the same. After all, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how crazy you want to get and how far out there you want to get. If you don't take the audience with you, if they can't clearly see what it is you want them to see, what you want to show them, it's not going to work anyway. Um, Goran's a master of that. He can reduce things. He can bring them down. And while still yeah. making them, some of the locations in this just look great, yeah. but he can, in a way, bring them down to earth, make them accessible and make them all the better for it. Otherwise, you know, sometimes you, you just end up looking at mush. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's very well said. He's, uh, he's, he, he's a real master at that stuff. I, and something that struck me when I was reading when I was reading issue one is that um, obviously a lot of your stuff has been very successfully a adapted of late, or particularly The Boys, which has its own momentum as a TV show and it's just going through the roof. And I, mm -hmm. I know you're happy with it, but it, I thought the thing about Marjorie is it, this, it reads to me now that people have proven they can actually make decent adult rated animated adaptations of comic books mm -hmm. it's invincible harley mm -hmm. quinn the hbo show you know i i, I think marjorie Finn, Finn would really suits itself for, for it really suits itself in terms of being adapted for animation you know that's, adult animation yeah that's an interesting idea i mean it's certainly it's um it's got so much going on constantly that i could see perhaps an animated approach serving it quite well yeah yeah, that, that, that's what I thought. But I think it's a great book. And anybody who's here checking this out, well, you're clearly a Garth Ennis fan. This, to me, feels like a, a, a case of that certain brand of like a Garth Ennis lunacy, kind of pure and distilled. And uh, you'll have a great time with reading this book. I really enjoyed it, mate. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Thank you. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, let's see, I've just seen the art for issue six. And um, I can tell you that things things continue down the path you're enjoying them being on. Brilliant. I, I can't wait. So you can order issue two and you can order issue three. And I think you can pre-order issue four, five and six from the links attached to our conversation. Garth, it's always a pleasure chatting to you, mate. You too, Andrew. Cheers. Take, Take care. care. I'll see you soon, brother. Take care. All right. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators. Subscribe right here. See you soon.